Welcome to Scoop Canada. Today's topic talks about Andrew Scheer's recent allegations about the Liberal government, who he has accused of corruption and a cover-up scandal. As always, do not forget to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell in order to keep watching the top Canadian stories. With that all set, let's break down what's happening and why it ought to matter to all Canadians. What Andrew Scheer seems to be accusing Liberal government is nothing but a green slush fund scandal, which seems to imply that most of the taxpayers' money was spent on green technology projects, which almost had no qualification requirements. As pointed out by the Auditor General, there seem to be question marks over eligibility in one case out of six, in respect of projects not qualifying, which in turn raises possible use and wastage of public resources and conflicts of interest. Scheer has also stated that he won't mind bringing Parliament to stand still if it means that these documents do end up getting into the custody of RCMP. The authorities, on the other hand, seem to be resisting, and ORP House leader Karina Gould has dared Scheer to explain his demand, describing it as an overreach and political gamesmanship. She states that such demands are encroaching on the charter rights of Canadians and further complicates the relationship between Parliament and law enforcement agencies. Whether you are in the Scheer camp or the Gould camp, thanks for coming to Scoop Canada and make sure you subscribe so you won't miss any updates. Now the devil is in the details. Now, I would like to turn to Andrew Scheer's assertion that the Liberal government did an absolutely terrible job at administering federal funds designed to enrich the development of innovative green technology projects. The whole scandal revolved around millions of dollars that Scheer alleged were misappropriated or directed to what he actually coined as a green slush fund. This pool of funds was created to provide resources for developing green and other enhancement projects. However, it has attracted negative reviews after AG's audit report revealed that one out of every six funded projects didn't comply with the federal funding requirements. What is more haunting, about 90 conflict of interest cases were detected, creating a possibility that the fund managers were beneficiaries of the concerned entities. What the term green slush fund implies to Canadians, according to the English term green slush fund, the government provided monies that could be accounted and spent without the supervision of a relevant authority, he has claimed. According to him and other conservatives, these documents must be provided to the police in order to facilitate prosecution, which shows that the Conservative Party believes tax dollars have been abused. On the other hand, the Liberal government has brushed this off, saying that this stance is fraught with the risk of undermining the independence of Parliament in relation to law enforcement. The Liberal House Majority Leader, Karina Gould, says that the arguments of the opposition may be that the documents will be politically motivated since they will not be useful to the judicial processes. In addition to Scheer, other Conservative MPs have voiced concern over Mark Carney, the recently appointed head of the Task Force on Economic Growth for the Liberals, who was previously the governor of the Bank of Canada. There are allegations relating to Carney's concurrent position at Brookfield Asset Management, which is one of the largest pending negotiations in which Carney is involved where he seeks a $50 billion fund from the government. These issues have raised suspicions of conflict of interest. The Conservatives believe that because of these corporate relations, Carney is likely to be in a position to overly influence government policies. Michael Barrett, the Conservative Ethics spokesperson, has stated concerns about how Carney's role as an advisor would affect the fairness of investments and contracts conducted by the government, as well as other business aspects by the Canadian authorities. Scheer's concern about cases related to mass expenditure and fraud proves his integrity as a person and his desire to ensure relative trust as a matter of concern over the U.S. government. He argues about such worries by stating that uncontrolled spending and lack of attention to detail makes the public, especially the taxpayers, lose trust that remains open and accounted for. 
The response of the liberal side led by Gould is that Scheer's right to disclosure can be asserted not as a biological right, but as a weapon, and is used to prevent the normal course of government activities and the process of lawmaking that threatens the citizens of Canada, on whom the government acts as a watch. These claims have resulted in a deadlock in Parliament for weeks, with Scheer's Conservatives pledging to persist the discussion until they are handed the papers. In the meantime, other government business such as healthcare, housing, and inflation have come to a standstill. The criticism has, therefore, raised issues about the capacity of Canadian governments to handle issues of pressing concern to majority of Canadians across the globe. Scheer's crusade is in more ways than one, not about the party. It is about things that touch on the lives of ordinary Canadians. As grocery and gas prices continue to rise, Scheer has asserted that inflation and uncontrolled government spending has been the major reason, especially for Canadians living on a fixed income. Thus, he believes the importance of government transparency. Canadians must always be aware of the manner in which their hard-earned money is being utilized. But there is more here that actually has to do with saying economy. On the other hand, Scheer's appeal for more openness goes to the core of the question of the relationship between people's government and her citizens. He advocates the Charter in the contrary that it is to safeguard people from the government and not the other way round. This is a position that could change the manner in which federal departments manage resources in future. If for you, government spending and accountability are issues of importance, then we invite you to be part of the community over here at Scoop Canada and hit that subscribe button. The Parliament has almost come to a standstill with the debates on whether the documents being requested by Scheer should be released or not. The refusal to relent by the Conservative MPs has also resulted in there being a considerable delay in the passage of new bills. Such a state of affairs has drawn criticism even from other opposition parties, including the Bloc Québécois, that see it as a violation of democratic principles. Yves-Francois Blanchet, one of the leaders of the Bloc, has observed that while the party seeks authentic explanations, the fruitless scrapping makes the Canadians miss out on important conversations and resolutions. Furthermore, it is not the first time Canada's Parliament has had a standoff involving documents. Back in time, in 2009, the Conservative Canada under Harper was sought to produce documents regarding the treatment of Afghan prisoners, a quarrel that ended with the prorogation of that Parliament for a number of months. Western economies penchant for influence through conflict is present in the Canada-Ukraine situation. Make sure to subscribe to Scoop Canada right now if you do not want to miss on how this Canadian standoff unfolds. Apart from the immediate gridlock, Scheer's allegations could have a more enduring influence. If Parliament ever wishes to concur with him, it may create a canon that warrants more attention on any government undertaking, especially if lots of taxpayers' money is likely to be expended. The meaning would be better attention and control restraints on future green technology schemes, and indeed any funded by the government ones. Also, they could also testify that Mr. Mark Carney, the former Bank of Canada governor, who was tasked to at the forefront of the Liberals Task Force on Economic Growth, should be investigated. They are asking the political question, do Carney's connections to Brookfield Asset Management, which is engaged in one of the huge government projects, create a conflict of interest? The Shears camp has voiced out ethical issues and concern, and the onus is now back on the government. These problems concern the very essence of the governance that Canadians demand. Their governance should be without opacity and should be answerable. At Scoop Canada, we strive for the truth. So if these issues are important to you, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for our latest videos. Thanks for listening to us at Scoop Canada. If you want to know more about Canadian politics, subscribe to Scoop Canada. Keep it here, keep it fresh, and as always, never stop questioning everything.